Knowledge is power, right? I'd like to introduce you to the four keys to your emotional genius. These are simple yet profound. We all have emotions. There's no denying it. Some of us have decided that we're not going to feel them or maybe we feel them all the time, but we all have them. The key here is to welcome them. Now, in American culture, we've decided that some emotions are good, some are bad, and there's a whole train of thought around positive emotions versus negative emotions, but I'm here to say that that is, it's a myth. All emotions have value and they're there for an important reason. It's up to you to listen to it. And once you can, once you can clear that cobweb of good and bad from feeling emotions, then the information you receive is profound and can be life-changing. So key number one is welcome all of your emotions equally. All emotions have value. Key number two is understand that emotions come at different levels of intensity. They come at soft mood state and intense states. And when you are able to listen to your emotions first, you'll probably listen to the ones that are really intense because those are the ones that are screaming to be heard. Then you'll start maybe to listen to the ones that are at their mood state intensity because they're still pretty strong and pretty intense, like that knock, knock, knocking at the door. And when you get better at listening to your emotions, then you'll start listening to them at their soft state intensity when they're just kind of whispering in your ear. And when you're able to kind of hear them whispering at you or um, tickling the back of your mind, that's when you're really getting somewhere with your emotions. So instead of letting them get to that really intense state where you can't not listen to them, when they're in that soft state, they're easier to act on. I'm telling you this from experience here. Because it's like they're more malleable. They're, you have more space around it. It's not just such an immediate must act now kind of a situation. It's a, hey, here's a situation. What are you going to do about it? You have all of these options. So what we're trying to get to here is listening to our emotions when they're soft and malleable and in a gentler state than when they're really intense and need to be listened to right now. Now, oftentimes the emotions that are intense are the ones that you listen to first, but emotions arise oftentimes together. Um, say for example, sadness and depression can come up together or anxiety and anger, or um, happiness and joy. The one that's intense will often get the attention, but other emotions come up uh, as well. Just understanding that you can feel more than one emotion at a time. Um, we, have, we don't have a lot of words in the English language that um, describe this, but bittersweet is one of them. Um, nostalgia could be another one where you you have that that sweetness but also the sadness of bygone times so that's an example of multiple emotions at the same time when you're able to put all of these things together so welcoming all of your emotions understanding well feeling into their intensity being able to name their intensity and all the emotions that you're feeling. Once you have that and that awareness, then we get to the fourth key, which is to channel your emotions. Essentially what that means is to listen to what it has to say to you and stand in your truth so, you, so that you are able to know what to do next, so that you are able to act in a way that is in alignment with your sense of integrity and your values but also so that you honor yourself and your needs and so that you move forward. Channeling emotions is something that takes time and practice and it benefits from having skills that support you in doing that. Skills like getting grounded, um, defining your boundary, the other empathic mindfulness practices that we teach here at Empathy Academy. But 
they're all grounded in awareness, self-awareness, and that you can do on your own. Just becoming aware of what you're feeling, when you're feeling it, giving it a name, and then honoring that information as you go forward. Those are the four keys. And I hope that now you can take this information and maybe it'll change your life a little bit.